So lesson 3.2 is on the chain rule with exponentials and logs, including bases other than e. And I've just snagged a piece of the page. There's a bunch of stuff we're supposed to write right here. But all of the stuff that we see there is actually the proof to a derivative which is listed in a box on your paper. And the derivative that you see is the derivative of a function that's exponential that is not a base of e. And the proof is kind of hard to follow. If you haven't actually seen, um, have, if you haven't actually seen one with numbers in it, so I actually, what I wanted to do is one that has numbers in it first. And where would you put this on your paper? Um, if, if your teacher you know, isn't requiring you write this down, then, and you don't feel like writing it down, don't write it down. But it's conceptual, and I think it's actually going to help you with the proof. So that's why I'm going over it. So say that I had 3 to some power, and I wanted to take the derivative of it. And I haven't taught you how to do that, right? The only thing I have taught you how to do is the derivative of e to the x. We know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And actually, up here in the notes, we see now that we'd like to introduce to you how to use the chain rule with e to the x. And so when you did a copy five times for me, you actually did a copy five times where it said d over du times, uh, take the derivative, sorry, of e to the u, where u is some kind of function, you will get e to the u with a du. And so I've gone over that in class. You should have seen me do one of those in class. But I'm about to do something very similar in just a moment. I will mention that in our book, instead of u prime, I use du, and that's because if I draw a prime mark sometimes on my screen, it'll disappear. There's like a, it's like a keystroke, so sometimes it disappears. So I usually just write du when I'm taking the derivative of something. So now that I've said all of that, and you've seen the derivatives of e to some, some function in, in class, you should hopefully feel comfortable with this concept. Ready? We know that if you have e to the power of some natural log, that that e to the power of some natural log will disappear. So I'm going to use a trick to create this e to the natural log of 3 to the power of x. And I'm doing this because I know that these operations are inverse operations, and they technically, they cancel out, is what some kids will say. They disappear. So I'm not changing the value of my function. I'm just saying that I want to still take the derivative of it. Now, having done that, I'm thinking, oh, well, I see 3 is to the power of x, and I, I I love the power rule for logarithms. Do you remember the power rule for logarithms? If you have some log with some base and you have something in here, like, you know, a, a function, and it's to a power, then what you're allowed to do is put that power out in front and then you can just have the log with the base to that function, okay? So I'm taking this power and I'm going to move it in front. And all of a sudden, I am very pleased that I've done this because I have the derivative d dx and I have my e, but now I have an x with a natural log of 3. A natural log of 3 is just a constant. I don't know what number it is exactly. I could put it into my calculator and find it. It's some sort of decimal answer, probably less than 1. But whatever number it is, it's a slope for my function x. And I mean, let's take the derivative now. I'm actually going to take the derivative of e to the x with a natural log of 3. And then I'm going to take the derivative of x to the natural log of 3. I'm taking that derivative. And what do I get? Well, remember all of this. Originally, the x was up here, and we knew that these pieces canceled out. So if I do this, put it back to where it was, the natural log of 3 to the x, all of this will cancel back out. And what I'll end up with at the bottom is a 3 to the power of x, which is what I started out with. Then I'm taking the derivative of x times a number. Remember that this is a constant. So all I have now is the natural log of 3. You're like, wait a minute, that's it? Yes, the derivative 
of 3 to the x is just 3 to the x with a natural log of 3. And I kind of proved to you why and how that happens. But in order for you to actually use this, right, how do I, you know, is there a shortcut? Do I actually have to do all of these steps? No, you don't have to do them. I say no, you don't need to do them. You can memorize the rule in the following way. On your paper, you can see there's a d, d, e, x of a to the x should be a to the x with a natural log of x. Whatever, you know, whatever that number is, uh, sorry, a, natural log of a. Whatever that number is for that base, you will have it as a multiplier later on, okay? So for example, if you want to do a d, d, x of 5 to the x, what are you going to get? You are going to get 5 to the x with a natural log of 5. And it's just that simple, okay? So, wait, really? It's that easy? Well, yeah, yeah, it's that easy. I mean, unless there's a function up here. Obviously, if there's a function up there, there's a little bit more. And that's what we want to get into right now, okay, is how to do it when it's not just an x up there. The number that's in the base, you'll always have this constant as a multiplier in the denominator. But other than that, if you put an actual function here, you will have to continue to use the chain rule and take the derivative of it. So now that I've covered that, let me go right back up to the top here and let's actually fill in this proof, okay? And the proof looks like this. Do you see how we did that e to the natural log? We know that part is going to cancel out. Do you see how we took this power of x and we moved it out in front? That is the log, I call it the power property. I call it the power property. All right, so taking the chain rule derivative then says that I should have an e to the x ln of a and that would be multiplied by the derivative of just this little piece, which is the natural log of a. And then remember how we generated this guy? So we know that this is really the same thing as e to the x, with, I'm sorry, e to the natural log of a to the power of x, but now it's being multiplied by the natural log of a. And then lo and behold, this piece can disappear again. And now I just get a to the x with a natural log of a. And that is what this says right here. The new rule, though, is that if you actually have some sort of function here, this is a function, then don't forget to take the derivative of it. Take the derivative of it. And for me, I use du instead of u prime, just because my note-taking capabilities on this on this Surface Pro require it. Every once in a while, a prime mark will just disappear, and so I, I tend to write du's, okay? There is a formula using the change of base formula, log base a of x equals the natural log of x over the natural log of a. We can derive a formula for differentiating, differentiating logs that have bases other than e, and the steps hopefully look familiar enough that you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I gotcha, right here. If I say I have log base a with a log, uh, log base a of x, what happens is this a becomes a constant in the denominator and this x becomes the numerator, okay? So that's, that's what the change of base formula says. And then if I want to, you know, I could actually show another step right here where I said, I have the derivative, and this is one over the natural log of a. Remember, this is just a constant. And that is being multiplied by the natural log of x. And the natural log of a, what happened? That was just a constant? Yeah, that's just a constant. What's the derivative of the natural log of x? Right here, what's the derivative of this piece right here? It's just one over x. So I still have that one over the natural log of a, and it will be in the denominator, but now I also have the x, and that is in the denominator. And take a look, here's the x, and here's the natural log of a. Why do we switch it? Why, why did I write this in back and this in front? Um, it's, just, it's just habit. 
natural log of a is a constant and I don't I don't like to put parentheses on everything it just gets tiresome so if you throw it at the end like natural log of 3 natural log of 2 natural log of 10 then that 10 the natural log you don't have to put parentheses around it okay so that's why I put it at the back now what about this rule well again I still have whatever is here goes there and this becomes a, a constant in the denominator but don't forget, please don't forget, this is very important, don't forget to take the derivative of whatever function this is. If this is a function, I will need to take the derivative of it and I will put that derivative right here, okay? Now, let's get to actually differentiating some stuff then. Now that we've gone over those rules. So I see f of x equals e to the x squared plus 3x and what do I need to do? I need to write down the derivative. It's exactly the same as the original. e to the power of x squared plus 3x. But don't forget to take the derivative of x squared plus 3x. What would that derivative be? Well, this derivative is this. It's 2x plus 3. So this is your whole answer. Okay? And I really like to put it in front. That 2x plus 3, I usually, I will write it right there because I just think it looks better there. But you don't have to, okay? But you'll notice that that's what I do in class. All right, so if g of x is the natural log of 3x, I'm supposed to use that the derivative is just, ready? What's u? u, I'm going to say, is 3x. What's du or u prime? It's just 3. So my answer to the question of what is g prime of x, well, the answer is that I should have du on top and u on the bottom. And wow, isn't that fascinating? Don't forget, even when you, um, even when you cancel out everything on top, there's still a hidden invisible one up there. And that means that x is still in the denominator. And are you having a moment right now where you're like, wait a minute, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Are you saying to me that the derivative of the natural log of 3x is still just 1 over x? Yeah. All right. So taking a look at number 3 and number 4, for whatever reason, I didn't have room to write anything there on my version of the paper. I'm hoping that your formatting is good and that you have room to write. So it says if g of x equals the natural log of 3x, he wants us to use that product property for natural logs. Um, log of m times n is supposed to be the log of m plus the log of n. And he says, let's try doing this, this, this differentiation that way and see what we get. So then g of x, really, I'm going to redefine it. I'm going to say it's the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of x. And now all of a sudden, whoo, something just popped into my head. What is the derivative of a constant? Well, isn't it 0? So g prime of x is going to be 0. What's the derivative of the natural log of x? It's 1 over x. So when we did this problem before, without the product rule, we were just using the chain rule. We found out that the answer was 1 over x, and we were like, why? And I said, oh, it's a pattern. You can see it. But this is why. It's because the natural log of 3 really was just a constant anyway. And that's how come it disappears. If you, if you take the derivative of a constant, it just goes away. Okay? So that was fun. Now, what about number 4? Well, number four, I have um, u, I'm going to say, is this t squared plus t. Uh, that's my inside function, okay? My outside function was natural log. When I take the derivative of that inside function, I get 2t plus 1. And so I'm going to say then that my derivative, it's supposed to be du over u. Well, du was 2t plus 1, and u was t squared plus t. Is there anything that simplifies out here? Not that I can see. 
So I'm going to write that answer down. And did you see how my prime mark, like I told you, sometimes it just randomly disappears. I don't know if you can see when it disappears, but there it, it, it was supposed to be there. So y prime is 2t plus 1 over t squared plus t. See below. I did those problems. I just didn't have room to do them right there. Like I said, my formatting was bad. So taking a look at problem number five then, that's actually a product rule problem. And I have x and I take the derivative and then I get, uh, I get one. I have the natural log of x and I take the derivative and I get one over x. It's going to be this times this and this times this. So h prime of x is going to be equal to x times one over x plus the natural log of x times one. That one's too easy. This is one plus the natural log of x. Product rule is so much fun. It just really flows, doesn't it? The next one, number six, I do have a power for my e. It's actually a whole function, so I definitely will want to take the derivative of that power, okay? I'm a little bit worried about space here. So I'm trying to <laughs> make it a little bit smaller. And here now I will say that if I do g prime of t, that I should get e to the negative 3 over t. That t looks terrible. And then I'm going to do the derivative of negative 3 over t. Well, what is the derivative of negative 3 over t? Isn't this really negative 3 times t to the negative 1 power? If I take the derivative of this, I'll have a negative 3, I'll multiply by that power, and the power will get reduced by 1. So that'll be the derivative piece. Let me try this again. A full answer here. g prime of t will equal, here's my e to the negative 3 over t, times this derivative that I just took. Ready? This times this is 3. And this is t to the negative 2 power. And you can leave it like that. You don't need to mess around with it any. If it really bugging you and you really, really want to, you could write it like this. g prime of t is equal to e to the negative 3 over t times 3 over t squared. Ah, I don't even like that. Don't do that. Don't feel like you have to go there. Leave it. Leave it like this. It's just so much easier. Okay. Number seven then. Ooh, I have another power. And this time I don't even have the, 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 the E that I was looking for. What I really wanted to do was see an E up there, right? I'm going to zoom in on it. Okay. So this is three to the power of V to the one half power. Ouch. Too many powers to a power. We don't even know what these kinds of graphs would look like. I bet they're pretty, though. All right, so f prime of v equals, well, remember what I said. The derivative is just the same as the ori original. There it is, 3 times the square root of v. Don't forget, though, there's that constant, supposed to be a natural log of 3. And here's the last piece. You still need to take the derivative of v to the 1 half. Always remember to take the derivative of each piece. So just, just to get the red piece, that's just taking the regular derivative of an exponential function. But this piece, this is the chain rule. You need to say that f, f prime, I'm doing it in green, f prime of v is going to be 3 times the square root of v, and you are going to still be multiplying by the natural log of 3, but then the last piece, that hook on piece, is this. It's 1 half v to the negative 1 half. Okay? And my v's sometimes look like u's, so I'm sorry about that. Try to put a little hook on it so you could tell that it's a v. Anyway, there you go. That's your answer. For this next piece, I, um, in order to graph y equals the natural log of x in that coordinate plane right here, I'll mention, I, I, already, I already graphed it. It's like this, and it's like this. It's very pretty. Uh, sorry, it actually goes through one like that. And it doesn't ever cross over the, the y-axis. It's like this. So it's a nice, pretty mirror image. You'll, you're going to see it right here on Desmos. 
I put it onto Desmos because I have the opportunity to actually graph the tangent line. So if you look at your paper, it says for the right half of the graph, the absolute value has no effect. So the derivative d dx of the natural log of x is 1 over x. And you can actually see that in my slider. So I can press play and it kind of shows you. I have 1 over x would be my derivative. Say, for example, I wanted to take the derivative at 2. So I should get 1 over x would be 1 over 2. So I've set this to be 2. Uh, right here, you can see it says, oh yeah, the derivative is 0.5. So that's a half. What about at negative 2? Because that's the second half of this question. It says, what is the derivative of the natural log of x when x is less than 0? And let's plot some slopes and think about it. So I checked to see what the derivative was at 2, and I got a half. Well, what about at negative 2? Well, I get a negative half. So basically up here, if I change this from a positive 2 to a negative 2, you'll be able to see the slope. There it is, positive, negative positive, negative, positive, negative. So it turns out the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x is 1 over x. And what we can do is we can ignore the absolute value. So if you're not exactly sure what it was we were just talking about, we were just trying to kind of prove to you that that absolute value is something that your eyes can just scan past it. You can ignore that absolute value. And my understanding is that on the AP exam, as a grader, if you forget to put the absolute value there, they'll still accept the answer. Um, technically, the domain of the function um, does change with the absolute value, uh, but the derivative itself does not change, okay? So um, when we look at example nine then, we see the derivative uh, d dy of the natural log of 5 minus 2y cubed. It should be, remember my derivative should be um, du over u. So, you know, 1 over x was our derivative when we were just taking the natural log of x and we were finding a derivative, we were just getting 1 over x. But now that we actually have a function here, I'm going to change this x into a u and I'm going to have to do a du piece. So it's du over u, all right? That looks really messy, so I'm gonna get rid of it. But if u, the function that's inside of those absolute values is five minus two y cubed, then du will be, well, what's the derivative of five? It's zero. What's the derivative of two y cubed um, being negative? That would be a negative six y squared. So my answer will be du over u is negative 6y squared over 5 minus 2y cubed. And to my knowledge, there's nothing to simplify there. <coughs> For the next problem, it says, when possible, expand logarithmic functions before differentiating them. And I already showed you the product rule where we had m times n. But this one, log of m over n, that one we would separate like this, log base m, my, I mean log of m minus log of n. Okay, so we're going to use both of those rules because it looks to me like I have a product right there and it looks to me like I have a quotient right there. So when I rewrite this, I would rewrite it in the following way. I would have the natural log of x times the natural log of 2x plus 1 to the 1 half power. That's going to help me use the power rule and the chain rule. Uh, sorry, I said times. It's supposed to be plus. And then minus, there's my quotient rule, minus what was in the denominator, which is the natural log of x squared plus 1. So when I find this derivative, I'm going to say the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. And then I'm going to say that the derivative of this right here, I'm going to have a 1 half, right? Um, because I'm taking, well, hold on. So when I take the derivative of this, I know I'm going to get 1 over x, which is 1 over 2x plus 1. Um, and that's to the 1 half power. So there's a square root there. Oh. 
So now let me rewrite this problem then. And and in in this <laughs> Okay, so now I want to use these properties, the product property and the um, quotient property. And you know what, right now, before I do this, I'm realizing this little piece right here, I'm even going to be able to use the power property. This is 2x plus 1, not a parenthesis, 1 being taken to the 1 half power. And so watch what I do. I'm going to say that y equals the natural log of x plus this is the natural log of 2x plus 1 being taken to the one half power. And then I have minus my quotient, the stuff in the, de de uh, in, the de in the denominator is gonna be natural log of x squared plus one. And right here, I wanna mess with this just a little bit more. There's my power rule. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take one extra step. I've got room, so I'm, I don't, I don't mind. That's not y prime, this is still just y. So now I have the natural log of x plus, and I'm going to write this piece in red now, one half times the natural log of 2x plus 1. And then one more piece minus the natural log of x squared plus 1. Now I won't lie, there's definitely math teachers that skip these properties. They don't have time to teach them, they'll skip them. And the reason why is that, you know, we really only use these properties when we're trying to do a complicated derivative. So if you've never really seen these properties be used in this way, it, it can hurt your brain a little bit. Hopefully you're following along though, because I'm about to take the derivative, okay? The derivative of the natural log of x is just one over x. And the derivative of, well, one half times the derivative mm, of natural log of 2x plus 1 is going to be 1 over 2x plus 1. And these things are multiplied together. And then my last piece, uh, don't forget that you, you, oh, don't forget, I almost did. Don't forget you have to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of that is 2. So there's a 2 there. And then here's my minus sign and my natural log, if I take the derivative of that, I'm going to get 1 over x squared plus 1, and then the derivative of this piece right here is supposed to be what? Uh, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of 1 is 0, and there you go. Now, I am compelled to clean this up. I really want it to look nice. 1 over x plus, these two cancel out. That's why I wanted to clean it up. It just looks nice. Look at this, 1 over 2x plus 1. And then over here, unfortunately, I don't really see anything that gets cleaned up, but I'll put it together so it looks nice. x squared plus 1. Ta-da! That's your derivative. All right? Minus. Sorry, minus. It was negative here. It will be negative there. And there you go. Now, for example 11, we need to remember what the derivative of something that's not natural log. So the, the derivative of natural log is 1 over x, but the derivative of any other log has a little piece to it that we kind of have to remember to put on there. So do we have a place where he gave us that? Yeah, he did. And I talked about it, but I didn't, you know, I, I didn't actually do one. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to do one and I want to copy this and I just want to put it down there for you so that you know where I'm getting everything from, right? So log base a of some function is being thrown into that log. When I find that derivative, what am I going to end up with, okay? Oh, how embarrassing. You see how old, how old my computer is. <laughs> you just heard how old my computer is. It's like, I took a picture for you like six seconds ago. Yeah, I know. Good job, I guess. You could have gone a little faster. So I'm saying then that A is 2 right? This A right here. And then I'm going to say that this, this is U. And I want to go in there and actually find the derivative. So I, I don't forget, you do need that hook on um, a different color, maybe that's U prime, I call it DU. So I would say that the DU, um, let's see, if u equals x, uh, 
I meant to change colors here. Come here, so slow computer. X squared plus one, then du will be two X, okay? So let me see if I can put it all together with colors. Y equals, what do I have? I'm gonna have a, a, a numerator and a denominator. I'm gonna put the du on top, and that's gonna be two X. I'm gonna put U on the bottom, which is X squared plus one, and I'm gonna do this little piece right here, this natural log of A is gonna be the natural log. In this case, A was two, okay? And so that's my derivative. Now, oops, see what I said about those prime marks? There you go. What if I wanted to evaluate this at two, okay? Y prime evaluated at two, and no colors here, I'm getting tired of that. Two times two over, two being squared plus one times the natural log of two. I would simplify this in the following way. I have four, uh, here I have four plus one is five, and this is a natural log of two. Ta-da. Um, officially, that answer totally works, but for those of you that are obsessed with the power rule the way that I am, uh, I feel compelled to finish this even more and say that I have the natural log of two to the fifth. Uh, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32. Two to the fifth is actually 32. So this, this finally would be four over the natural log of 32. I don't know which answer would appear on the AP exam. If this was multiple choice, it is possible that you would have to go all the way to that.